Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at the Sony Cybershot DSC RX10 Mark II. Priced at $12.99 US, this camera just started shipping stateside, and I know a lot of you, like myself, are excited to get your hands on it, and you should be, because the RX10, its predecessor in many ways, was one of the best bridge cameras ever made, so high expectations here for the Mark II. So what is different? Well, I'll flip the box around, start off. You can see the accessories right there. Of course, all optional. There is a hot shoe on the camera. You'll see in a moment when I get it out of the box that really does give you a lot of flexibility, uh, both creatively and professionally. So the RX10 at 1300 might seem like a lot uh, for a point and shoot camera, but um, you know I can tell you now that the Mark II is an enhancement in every way, and that is where uh, the original uh, RX10 started. So the price hasn't gone up from the original uh, starting price point, but we have gotten uh, quite a bit more in the way of features. So it's working around a one inch sensor, uh, 20.2, uh, uh, 20, uh, again, 0.2 megapixels. I wanted to make sure no one misinterpreted, thought I said 22 megapixels uh, because I did not. Uh, and that is a rear lit or backlit sensor, exactly the same sensor and design DRAM stack chip that you'll find in the RX100 Mark IV, which I've been shooting with a great camera. Uh, but here you're getting a significantly larger form factor and significantly more capability because you do have a 24 to 200 millimeter piece of Zeiss glass F2.8, so a fast piece at that, approximately 8.3 times is uh, the actual uh, rating of that zoom range, if we're going to speak in those terms. Again, 35 millimeter equivalency. Uh, you have high speed or super slow mo recording capable 40 times. Uh, and you can see the shutter speed also uh, peaking there at a 32 thousandth of a second. So this is, uh, you know, really new ground for Sony, anybody else in the business for that matter especially at this price point and in a package like this. So 960 frames per second video capture capability. Uh, you also have UHD or 4K video capture that's capped at a little under 30 minutes, something that uh, the Mark IV, which I have right here, uh, is capped at five minutes because of overheating issues. So this is a great pocket camera to do basically everything, but it is not a video camera where this arguably absolutely is. You have a three inch tiltable LCD, everything captured in XAVCS if you're dealing with the 4K uh, in all of its uh, quality uh, goodness, uh, which is 100 megabits per second uh, at 30p. Uh, and of course you can step down. Wi-Fi, NFC, everything else is here. Let's get this thing out of the box. So you can see, of course, the first thing we're going to get hit with is paperwork. Nothing new there. I'm not going to go through that, but let's get to the camera. And for those of you that subscribe, you already know that I like to give you a little bit of background, at least on my experience with any predecessor to a product like this, so that you're aware of at least the background I have beyond just pulling this thing out of the box. Now, before I show you the camera, let's take a look at the expected accessories, which uh, I'm anticipating what generally we get, which is a strap. And this actually looks relatively nice for an included free strap. I mean, some alpha orange branding, and this camera deserves it. Uh, at $1,300, again, it is expensive. It is a point-and-shoot camera, but it is pretty much the best bridge, or as I mentioned earlier, it did bring the bridge back into style. We have our external wall charger. You're going to connect the USB cable right here in my right hand to this, and then connect that to the camera. Of course, you can purchase... Uh, an external charger to use instead. And then last but not least, we have our battery. And this is the exact same battery uh, that you'll find in all of Sony's Alpha line cameras. So interchangeable lens, uh, interchangeable lens body systems, both full frame, uh, as well as basically everything that the E-mount lives on. So it's you know a clear statement by Sony that this camera means business. They're using the same battery type. Uh, and by the way, the rating is uh, 360 shots uh, for the battery life on this. Of course, I will be testing that, but let's get this out of the packaging finally. And it's wrapped up pretty well. Uh, for those of you wondering, the camera is made in China. That's where Sony's making everything pretty much these days. Double bagging it there uh, on the packaging. You can see we've got a lens hood right here, front and center, with some bubble wrap. 
This is actually the most care I've seen Sony take in quite some time. Uh, even on the original RX-10, we, we did not get this sort of treatment. Uh, this is uh, weather sealed, for those of you that are curious. And this really is that all-in-one camera that can do absolutely everything. So if that's what you're looking for, single body, you're not worried about the weight, you want to replace a system, or you just, again, want everything in one piece of equipment, this is really about as good as it gets right now, unchallenged, at least until Panasonic brings something to the table. Uh, an update to the FZ1000. You can see that Carl Zeiss 24 to 200 uh, mil piece of glass that I was talking about before. That is just, if it's anything like the previous gen, which I anticipate it will only be better with the new sensor being backlit and then also the 4K video capability. Uh, it's just a whole lot of camera. You can see we have an LCD readout uh, display here for basically all the pertinent information you'd expect. Uh, your rocker right here for zooming uh, in and out your power switch, uh, exposure, compensation, your mode dial, uh, the hot shoe mount. We also have a flash right here that is center mounted. It is not going to trigger unless I have a battery in there, which I do not. Uh, some Wi-Fi branding here on the left side because Wi-Fi and NFC are on board. And that 4K that you see there to me really is a big deal. I know a lot of you uh, a lot of people in general do not care about UHD because you don't have displays yet to watch it on, but I can't stress enough how great it is for future-proofing moments. If you have children, you're capturing anything of relative significance, um, you will be very happy that you have it in 4K down the road, and it, it's no different than how I felt about HD when it first became, I'll say, uh, affordable to just about the average consumer. Granted, we're still not there with 4K, but we're getting there. Uh, the ports we have here, we have two doors. Uh, we have microphone input as well as headphone jack for monitoring. And we also have uh, our charging port and HDMI out. And uh, I do believe this is a clean output. So for those of you looking to really use this to its full potential in the, in the video realm, Sony has not forgotten how well this camera fared. Uh, not only as a bridge camera, but as a B-roll type video camera. Um, all metal construction on the lens for the most part. There is some plastic employed. The body does have heft to it. Uh, your OLED viewfinder here also improved upon, uh, to my knowledge, so I expect good things. That tilting screen looks like it got a little bit slimmer. Um, it is not a touch screen for those of you that are curious. Sony stays away from that. Uh, that was something they like to do with uh, cyber shots once upon a time, but uh, Sony has geared itself more towards, um, I'll say, prosumer features, and in, the, in their prosumer world, touchscreen is not part of the game. Fairly simple layout here that kind of follows all of their other um, cyber shot camera models in terms of button layout, even though the RX10 uh, is its own uh, beast, no question about it. There's nothing else in the Sony lineup like it except for at least this camera because it shares the same sensor and internal design, as I mentioned before, with the DRAM stack and potential capability, even though they are completely different form factors, price points, and the lenses really differentiate them, differentiate them in a big, big way. Uh, Built-in neutral density filter, uh, the button layout, self-explanatory. Uh, over here we have our uh, SD card slot, which I actually happen to like a lot. A lot of Sony cameras integrate it into the bottom, like the RX. Uh, 100 that I was just showing before, your battery bay right there, and that pretty much covers uh, most of what you need to know about the body. Still, like in the first gen, uh, something that was pretty critical in my opinion was the ability to turn the click on or off uh, for controlling um, your uh, exposure, and that to me is something that, you know, anyone who wants to have it, or excuse me, not exposure, um, but uh, yes, exposure. Um, but to have that control uh, for video, to be able to eliminate the click uh, was critical. I mean, something that otherwise, obviously, you would be using separate audio and dealing in post, which a lot of people could do, but why not have the option of really deciding whether or not you're living in a still world or video when we all know how we're going to end up using a camera like this and shooting on a regular basis. 
So having quick access there to turn that click on or off. And for those of you wondering what the value of the click is, is basically, you know, knowing exactly where you are in terms of steps without having to actually look. That is the value of giving you that tactile feel. It's not just to make a noise. Uh, it is so that you actually know where you're at uh, in the range. So a good feature to have, something that was brought from the RX-10. We have it here again, and I think it's great to have on lens. Uh, and then, of course, you still have the ability uh, to assign the ring that I'm playing with right now uh, for zoom or for actual uh, focus. So it's all a matter of personal preference, and that's in the menus. But that pretty much sums it up. Not really a whole lot else to share with you about this camera other than that I have uh, very high expectations. Uh, and that's because, again, the RX-10 really did set the bar. Uh, and redefine uh, the entire bridge camera market. So a lot to like here. Looking forward to putting it through the paces. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.